Hey everyone, it's Terry, Terry's Philippine Journey. Out here on the coastline, it's pretty rough. The uh, Typhoon Betty had passed us, uh, I think, about a day ago, so the surf was the roughest I've ever seen it since I've been here the last five months. So you can hear that roaring in the background. It looks like it's uh, four, five, six foot waves or something crashing up there. But what I wanted to talk to you about is uh, Rusi, uh, what our thoughts are on it, and some of the uh, bike tips I've learned over the year, just a few of them. Just kind of keep it brief. So this is my 2022 Lucy XRY200. I've had the big wheels upgraded. So it's 2118. Really happy with that. Uh, overall, the bikes uh, continue to perform to the value that it is, meaning it's worth it. So uh, some things I've learned, little tips and tricks I've learned over the years is uh, We'll talk about the lever placement first is one you know don't point them way up and don't point them way down you can kind of see mine are like that you want to be comfortable and like a straightforward natural reach also a lot of people think just up and down on the lever here I'm doing all the cam camera work here as well so it's difficult bear with me but also the reach when you go to grab the lever you want to be out here on the end you don't want to be down here so I actually slide my levers way in on the bar so you can see when you pull it I'm about midway a little past midway on the grip same on the clutch over here so you get more leverage see I've got it adjusted way far away from the end so it's down a little bit and then inward so maybe give that a try a little tip uh, of course uh, whatever you prefer after you try different settings is the right one for you that's just something that i've dabbled with i've been riding about uh, 35 40 years right across enduro mainly enduro i've had about 30 or 40 bikes so that's kind of lever position. Bar position, I kind of keep it in a neutral here. It's in zero, uh, pretty much in zero, maybe roll back slightly. And I like to have these bends here kind of lined up with the fork somewhat. The way the fork travels up and down, I like, like the bend of this bar to be similar to that and the hand grips to be back below the steering axis. I think as you get back, it slows the steering as you're back behind it. And as you go forward, the steering gets quicker and more shaky. So I prefer it back as much as possible. But there's not a lot of adjustment uh, here, just you know, loosening these bolts and then turning it back and forth. I hear a lot of conversation on uh, chain tension. You can, without anybody even telling you, the simplest way to figure it out, in my opinion, humble opinion, is you have a pivot here in the center of the axle, you have a pivot here, and you have a pivot back here. Take a strap or something, be careful that you don't break your bike and go up around the seat here, or ratchet this down until this swing arm becomes straight across with this, not up, and then down you can see there's a curve on it so bring the swing arm up until it's completely straight parallel uh, clear across the frame and when you do that then adjust it so it's uh, tight just got a little bit of play because that's your tightest position your suspension moves in an arc like this this is the loosest when it's down, it's just sitting there, and straight ahead when all this is lined up is your tightest. And then as it compresses up here, it becomes loose again. So it goes loose, tight, loose, tight, loose to the bottom. So you want it not to be too tight in the tightest position. A lot of people will go, that's really loose and tighten it up 
in this position, and then when it comes, the suspension goes through the compression, it's actually too tight. And you can snap your chain or wear, wear out your sprockets really quick. So that's my little tip for uh, adjusting your chain, because a lot of people wonder, you know, how much sag you should have. So if you don't know, then go ahead and that's a good way, standard way, and I think it works about on every motorcycle. So compress it, get a toe strap, and put it around your seat, ride your swing arm, and compress it, and adjust your swing arm when this is all level back here. So that's one tip on that. So if you guys have any questions or any suggestions or comments, I okay. I sure would like to uh, hear them and stuff. Any tips on the roof? See, I'm uh, new to the country here in the Philippines, so learning, uh, learning, uh, learning all the uh, tips and tricks uh, to, that you guys are using on your roofies. I've never owned one, never even seen one. I've always had KTM and Honda and all the other manufacturers, so. So that's that. So again, as you can see, this side's easier to show you. You can see how that's hanging down. That's the loosest position. And as that swing arm comes up, where it's parallel with this, and it's straight out and doesn't have that bend in it, that's the tightest position. Now let's move on to maybe the engine oil. People ask, uh, what should you run? How should you change it, blah, blah, blah. So I think a good quality oil, uh, semi-synthetic. The main thing is keep it clean. Um, where you're, in, you know, it's better to have a cheap oil and it be clean than an expensive oil you can't afford to change. So I tend to run the more expensive oil. And for here, my suggestion would be a 2050. I'm going to run the Motul Synthetic 2050 in this. I believe it takes a quart. And before you ever change the oil in your machine, you make it the engine hot. You don't just make it, you don't run it and get it warm and then change it. What happens is your engine oil has all this dirt and particles in it. And that sticks on different things in there. There's different surfaces. So what you want to do to properly change your oil, because a lot of people change your oil and then they put a new one in and they go for a ride, well, the oil's already dirty because they didn't change your oil properly. So change your screens, filter, and the greatest tip is take your motorcycle, run it down the lane like this, get it really hot. It's not so much the heat, but also, spinning the gear shift uh you know you got a five speed get at least three or four or five gears really rev it because that uh, makes your engine like a blender it blends the oil and gets all the dirt off the engine and then quickly stop after you shifted through all the gears and really revved it so rev it up get everything spinning real good just like a blender a mixer at home and then change your oil and you have a much cleaner engine and longer lasting bike. So just don't have it warm and sit there and change it. So go for a ride. A good, you know, five, 10 minute ride, really shift the gears and mix it. You wanna mix all the gears and engine and clutch and get all the engine, uh, all the dirt mixed together with the oil and then, then you actually drain the dirt out of your motor and it's not stuck on the parts inside when you change it. So that's another one. We'll quickly go to uh, tires, tubes, tubeless, that type of stuff. So years ago, 30, 40, 50 years ago, when I first started riding, you'd have tires and tubes and you'd put baby powder in the tire and tube to keep it from sticking and make the uh, make it roll more supply off bumps and, and uh, you know impacts and stuff rocks roots and so forth 
So nowadays they've got tubeless is one of the latest things which I've done, I'm a big fan of. And you run some sealant in your tire. And they have, of course, the heavy duty tubes, which uh, also work. They've got a boost uh, inserts, which work well, they're kind of a pain to do. But the ultimate goal is not to flat, and they're good. Not so good on the street, I guess, if you do a lot of high speed riding. Another tip I've learned, uh, which most people isn't aware about, you take your tube and tire, and when it's you're putting it together, you spray your tube with silicone, also inside your tire, so you guys don't get it on your, it's not outside, it's inside. So you soak your tube in silicone, get it really wet and slick, and then you spray a little bit also inside your tire, and what that does, it uh, doesn't totally eliminate, but it really uh, prevents pinch flats. Your tire and tube become separate and really slick, so anytime you hit a bump, the tube does not want to stay part of the rim and the tire, it wants to move around. So that's a trick I've learned over the years, so, uh, so I look into that. So you gotta be careful with silicone, because you don't want to get it on your brakes and stuff like that. But, so if you want to have a smoother rolling tire and uh, less pinch flats at low tire pressure, uh, silicone your tire and tube. So, and then of course when I do tubeless, I run a uh, Stan's latex sealant, which what that does is help seal up any leaks. And anytime you might have a thorn or nail, it helps seal it uh, while you're riding. So if you guys have any suggestions and uh, tips and tricks, feel free to leave them in the comments. That's just a few, I've got a lot more. Um, but we won't get into it too much. One of them is take a uh, little steel cable and run it from here to one of your bolts or frame that keeps this from getting bent out, like your brake lever. So you have a little hole in here. Take a steel cable over to your frame or something. It helps support that so it doesn't get damaged in an impact or snag of a tree or rock. So wire your shifter and brake pedal and then also uh, in the old days we would take wire and wrap them around the grips here and twist it and one one here one here and one there and that locks on your grips they will not move and they will not come off so some little uh, uh, wire uh, wire wrap or something o almost like a coat, coat hanger so that's another little tip. So I'm sure there's a thousand more I can share with you, but I'm also interested in you sharing with me. So, well, like I said, it's May the 29th, and we're uh, facing a little bit of a Betty's uh, headwinds here. So she's passing by and heading on. So she's through the Philippines, but we're still getting a good wrap around wind from her. So we're ended there. So. I got more upgrades coming in the next week or two. I've got about a 12, 10 to 12 more upgrades I'm having done to the bike that I'm doing. So we'll talk about them and keep uh, keep you posted on everything. So basically, I've just mainly did the uh, the big wheel package, which I'm extremely pleased with. But if you're not very tall, then maybe you might not like that because it does make the bike look uh, all right, that's my time for the day. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any uh, suggestions or if you feel like I've been helpful in a way or any comments on what I've tried to explain. Thanks. Have a great day.